everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's 20th Century Style Icon series. In this episode, we're flying high with America's most famous aviatrix and its most famous missing person, Amelia Earhart, a lady who really needs no introduction. Amelia was suggested to me by Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group member, Naomi. So Naomi, this one's for you. I was also inspired to do a little video on Amelia because tonight there is a new documentary airing on the History Channel that I am really excited to see. Amelia Earhart, The Lost Evidence. By the time you watch this video, it will have aired. But the whole thing is based on a photograph that has recently been unearthed showing a group of people standing on a dock in the Marshall Islands, which was under Japanese control in the late 1930s. And you see that little group of people? Well, there is a theory that is going to be discussed in tonight's documentary that the gentleman on the left is Fred Noonan, Amelia Earhart's navigator when she disappeared, and the girl sitting on the dock might very well be Amelia Earhart herself. The implication being that she didn't die in a crash or get lost over the Pacific, but that her plane went down and that she was captured by the Japanese. And so this is going to be intriguing stuff, but we're here to talk about Amelia Earhart as a genuine 20th century style icon. Yesterday, when I told a friend that I was working on an episode on Amelia Earhart, his response really surprised me. He said, hang on, was she a fashion icon? Um, hello, Amelia Earhart was a genuine fashion icon, both in the 1930s and today. She had a head start, nature gave her a head start. She was tall and thin and beautiful and wore clothes very elegantly and had her absolute own style. It was casual, it was slightly tomboyish, and it was very trendy. Look at her here with her slacks and her sort of men's shirt with her men's tie and her tousled cropped hair. She was very avant-garde, just to remind us of what most people wore and looked like in the 1930s. Let's look at the beautiful Claudette Colbert here. Now, what she's wearing and how she looks and how she does her hair and how she does her makeup really was the ideal of the 1930s. But Amelia broke away from that and had that far more sort of Catherine Hepburnish, slouchy, casual, tomboyish look. And she was genuinely trendy. I think that we have this idea that trendiness, the concept of being trendy, started in the 1960s. Well, certainly that's when the word started to be used, but certainly there were always people who took a slightly more edgy approach to fashion. And look what Amelia is wearing here. She certainly falls into that camp. But she didn't always look tomboyish. Look at her here, dressed in this beautiful lace evening gown. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, although Amelia Earhart was incredibly famous in her day, she was a household name and she was very beloved. There were even pop songs written about her, you know. She was always in need of financing her expeditions and would do anything to raise money to finance these expeditions. She was one of the first celebrities outside of fashion to franchise her name. Amelia Earhart Luggage, for example, is known to most of us, I think, but not everyone is aware of the fact that she also had her own fashion line. The friend I spoke to yesterday certainly wasn't aware of this. Amelia Earhart Fashions, and isn't that a chic label with that scarlet plane flying across her signature? The concept behind her fashion line was sportswear, clothing that was easy to wear, that a woman could move in, that a woman could play in, that a woman could work in. And unlike so many celebrities today, it seems like every celebrity has their own fashion line, Amelia actually designed it. And there she is working with a tailor on one of her own creations. She would model her fashion line. Isn't this a great dress? And take a look at that ensemble. It looks quite formal to us, but again, you can see her idea of this sort of slouchy, easy to wear clothing really coming into play with her own fashion line vision. 
Take a look at that. I would wear that to school. I absolutely would. That is a terrific outfit. She consulted with Scaparelli on her fashion line. Her and Scaparelli were friends. Her favorite designer was Elsa Scaparelli. So this really speaks to the fact that she was genuinely interested in fashion. It was a real hobby of hers. And there were always lovely little details in Amelia's very short-lived line, like buttons and fastenings in Bakelite planes or Bakelite wings. So it all kind of tied in with her, her main job, her day job as a world famous aviatrix. It was, of course, the Great Depression, and Amelia was very aware that not everybody could buy her clothes, even though they were very reasonably priced. Designed by Amelia Earhart, this says, Miss Earhart is not only a flyer, she's a designer too. The proof is here in a sports pattern, especially nice for school. She brought out a range of patterns as well for those who couldn't actually afford to buy the garments so they could make Amelia Earhart designs themselves. Made for motion. This is a feature in a magazine and it really does speak to her concept. For example, she did something kind of revolutionary. She insisted that all of her blouses were much longer than the average blouse length at the time. Why? Because if you were moving around and you were reaching up or you were playing a sport, your blouse would often come untucked from your pants or your skirt. And she said, I read a quote where she said, uh, if somebody wearing one of her blouses suddenly feels like doing a handstand or a cartwheel, their blouse shouldn't come untucked. So this was kind of practical and it sort of spoke to this particular type of woman in the 1930s, the sporty adventurer. And look at this. This is a jacket that would look fantastic today on either a boy or a girl, I think. And look at that insignia she designed. This is for the 99s. Who were the 99s? They were a team of female aviatrix in America. She was their president and she designed their uniforms. But take a look at this, Amelia modeling a dress from her collection. Look at the back with those three button fastening and that beautiful cutout. And take a look at the belt tied at the back. She had a great fashion sense, a great fashion eye. So although Amelia Earhart was the first celebrity to have her own fashion line, it didn't do very well. It was the Great Depression after all, and it was difficult to launch any new enterprise. Interesting, her luggage range was more successful. In fact, it outlived her because as we all know, Amelia Earhart disappeared over the Pacific and became America's most famous missing person. We still don't know what really happened to her, but maybe tonight's documentary will give us some answers or at least a few new theories to think about. In response to my friend who questioned whether or not Amelia Earhart is a fashion icon, nearly 80 years after her disappearance, take a look. Fashion goes back to the wonderful Amelia Earhart for inspiration time and time again. In fashion editorials, on the runway, she is still with us. This incredible style, this incredible land that was all of her own is constantly drawn upon for inspiration. Oh, look, there's Rihanna channeling her inner Amelia. There's something about Amelia who speaks to the adventurer in all of us. And she's certainly been an inspiration to me on a personal level. There is a quote by Amelia Earhart that I absolutely love and draw upon it quite a lot. Over the past few years, it seems that I've been tasked with projects that are so enormous that it seems impossible to me that one woman can do them. And before starting any of these massive projects, I have this moment of thinking, how the hell am I going to do this? And Amelia's quote always comes back to me. The most effective way to do it is to do it. 
And I hope you enjoyed what I did here with my little tribute to the amazing Amelia Earhart. You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com. Like us on Facebook, I believe that's the expression. Better still, join the Ultimate Fashion History Facebook group. We have so much fun over there. If you enjoy the Ultimate Fashion History and would like to make a small donation to support the channel and its overheads, I've put a little PayPal donation button here on the channel art. I'm back every week with new episodes on the Ultimate Fashion History, so just click the little circle to subscribe. And until then, thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see the documentary tonight. Bye for now.